Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning, episode 429. Back on the topic of the MLB. Today I'm going to be talking about what you Cardinals fans can expect for the St. Louis Cardinals in the 2021 season. As you can see, I'm repping my new Cardinals gear, so I'm excited to talk about what this team has in store for 2021. But first, of course, question of the day, and that is, who is your franchise Cardinals leader uh, in slugging percentage? Again, comment below if you know the answer, and if you don't, stick around to the end of the video, and we will discuss it then. But as promised, let's start talking about what the Cardinals have in store for 2021. Um, based off, or let's take a look back at their previous uh, two seasons at least. Last year they went 30 and 28, just above 500. And the previous year in 2019, the most recent full MLB season, they went 91 and 71. And really over the past decade, they've had consistent winning records for the most part. So this Cardinals team is certainly not a team that we're going to have to we're going to have to see come from rock bottom up. They they've been they've been above average for a while and I do think that they will be better than that in 2021. Looking at the roster, they got a lot of guys that I really like. Of course, the elephant in the room acquiring Nolan Arenado, huge transaction. Again, I can't really get over how much the Cardinals won that trade by. Uh, I think they sent four prospects to Colorado, uh, only one being a top 10 prospect. It was a second baseman. I can't remember his name. Um, but they were sent, the Cardinals received Nolan Arenado and $51 million. As I mentioned in a previous video, the Cardinals, theoretically, uh, Nolan Arenado's, or not theoretically, it does still exist on his contract with the Cardinals and opt out after this season. So theoretically, he could play one year in, in St. Louis uh, and want out, and the, the Cardinals didn't have to pay him a dime and still made money based off or still made money from the $51 million that Colorado sent the Cardinals. So they're in a really good spot with Nolan. Uh, do I think he'll want out after the first year? Uh, right now I say no, but it really depends on how that year goes for both him and the team. It's really a personal decision. If he doesn't think St. Louis is the right fit for him, he might want to leave. That's not for me to say. But long story short, they won, they won the hell out of that trade. They could, like I said, have Nolan for a whole year for, for free and actually make money still from the Rockies. So they won that by a long shot. But as far as around the rest of the diamond, uh, at least in the infield, I do like what the Cardinals put together. Starting behind the plate with Yachty in his 18th or 19th year. Saw a video of him today in spring training uh, challenging. Uh, there was a rookie running, a uh, base runner on first, and he was kind of talking trash to Yachty, and he challenged him to, to run on him and gunned him out. So, so long story short, Yachty still got it. He's not really a guy that I'm expecting to hit 30 home runs and hit 280, 280-plus. Um, but he is a guy that I'm going to expect to hold it down behind the plate and, and swing the bat consistently, 250, 260 hitter with maybe – fit 20 home runs on the year. So so Yachty's not the guy he was in his prime, but as far as behind the plate, I know that I can count on him uh, to, or if I'm a Cardinals fan, I know that I can count on him to play good defense and, and really hold runners accountable on the base path. So Yachty I like a lot. And then at first base with Paul Goldschmidt, a guy that if you look at MLB first baseman rankings, I think last year, uh, sorry, Yes, going into this year, he's like a number seven or eight, and last year he was top five. So, so Goldschmidt is a guy, definitely a top ten first baseman in the league, can really swing the bat, can hit you 30-plus home runs for sure. I'm uh, probably going to hit 260, 265-plus. So Goldschmidt, a guy that I like a lot, especially since I'm a huge fan of first baseman. Um, so Goldschmidt going to hold it down there uh, at first, and then you go across the diamond to Nolan, who is a – I mean, outside of Bregman, Matt Chapman, who Manny Machado, whatever, uh, Nolan's a top three third baseman for sure. So you've got a really good corner infield between Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado. So if I'm a Cardinals fan again, I'm super, super hopeful about our infield. And then, of course, up the middle, Tommy Edmond at second, solid guy, and Paul DeYoung at shortstop, solid guy. Neither of those guys are really going to hit the ball out of the – really tear the cover off the ball, I don't expect, but they should be solid in the middle of the infield. So so between the catcher, Nyadi, and the infield, I like what the Cardinals have. Nothing, no, no, I shouldn't say nothing spectacular. Uh, Nolan's pretty pretty damn good, and so is Goldschmidt. But their infield overall is definitely good. Not super spectacular, but is def definitely good. Uh, the outfield, not a whole lot impressive going on out there. I do believe that in Dexter Fowler, the, the Cardinals did trade away their best outfielder. Not that I think the Cardinals are going to really miss Dexter Fowler that much. He was that good but I do think he held it down to center field uh, so or in the outfield I guess I guess he rotated maybe he did play center field sometimes but for the most part I think Dexter Fowler was the best outfielder for the Cardinals and now he is gone so who's out there Tyler O'Neill uh, Harrison Bader actually a Gators alumni there with Bader and then Dylan Carlson so 
not a great outfield. I don't expect this this Cardinals outfield to do spectacular things, but they should hold it down pretty well. Uh, and then w- really the two main things that I have holding this Cardinals team's back is depth in their starting rotation, uh, and they're missing a, they're missing a big bat or two, which I've said I've said that over the past several times I've talked about this team. I do think this is a team that simply put, what can you expect for uh, from them in 2021? One sentence, uh, 95 wins, and a playoff series win, probably a wild card win. I think they'll go out second round in, in the NLDS, but I do think they'll win a playoff series and will win 95 regular season games if I'm going to be straight up there, uh, right there. That's really my main verdict. But again, my two things holding this team back is they're missing a, a key bat or two, and their starting rotation depth is not good. Um, Jack Flaherty obviously didn't have a great year last year. I think his ERA was just around four, maybe a little over. But last year was a weird season. I do have good faith in Jack Flaherty, a really, really young, uh, good pitcher. Of course, he's, he keeps his composure really well on the mound. Obviously, he comes out with fire, but he, you can't really tell that it's he, he's just so cool on the mound. Uh, I like Jack Flaherty a lot, and he runs his fastball up pretty good. So, so Flaherty, I think no problem there. Him being your number one, I think he's as good as many other teams' number one in the league. Uh, and then second, Adam Wainwright. He was questionable, but he's back. He's 39 years old. He's a good veteran presence, but this is not a guy that I would like to see in your number two spot in your rotation. I'd like to see him. Uh, he's, he is a valuable asset on the roster with his veteran experience and his and his potential help for younger guys, but I wish there was somebody else better to come up and take that two spot from Wainwright because he is definitely old. Um, and then I got Kim uh, next and Miles Mikolas, and then who's going to be the fifth guy? There's a bunch of options. Carlos Martinez, who, who struggled in the postseason in 2019. I remember that series they... I think they come out on top. They beat the Braves, but then in the 2019 NLDS, they lost to the eventual World Series championship, the Nationals. Carlos Martinez struggled against the Braves, and I just that's been in my head ever since, to be honest. Carlos Martinez, not a, not a lot of innings as a starter. He's been out of the bullpen for the last couple, uh, couple seasons, so I don't really have a lot of faith in him as a starter, but he could be good, and he's battling also a back injury, I think. So, so that's not super hopeful there. And then uh, John Gant, Alex Reyes. And Johan Oviedo, other options for this Cardinals rotation, but the depth with the rotation is not great. Uh, and then, like I said, missing another key bat or two. They really need a guy. Uh, they need an outfielder. I think that can really swing it. They don't have, and they need another infielder. I mean, De Young is honestly. When you look at the other teams in the NL, uh, the Dodgers have Seager, definitely better than De Young. Uh, the Padres have Tatis. Definitely better than DeYoung. Uh, the Braves have Dansby. That's actually a fair comparison. I would personally rather have uh, Dansby over DeYoung, but that's you can make an argument for either one. So they're similar players. But the elite teams in the NL have top three shortstops. Um, the Mets, again, are going to be pretty good. They're going to have Lindor. So the... The Cardinals are missing a, a big shortstop or a big bat in the infield. It doesn't have to necessarily be shortstop, but these other teams in the NL have a huge bat in the infield as their shortstop. The Cardinals do not, so that is not going to be really helpful for them in the long run. But again, the strengths of this Cardinals team, good infield overall, defensively, good catcher, uh, and they do have one of the best corner infields in baseball and then one of the best third basements in baseball in Nolan Arenado, and they totally won the hell out of that trade with the Rockies. So... Again, overall, if I'm given one statement for what the Cardinals have in store for this year, it's a 95-win regular season, which is which is pretty impressive. Uh, 100 games might happen, but I, if I had to bet over under 100 games, I'm going to go under for this Cardinals team. So again, 95 wins and a playoff berth and a win. I do think, I did make a, a video before, I do think they can win their division uh, if they play good baseball, which I do expect them to do. So again, um, Cardinals going to have a good year, going to be an uphill climb from where they've been in the past, which I said it has been mediocre uh, to, to solid, so they're going to be a little better than that. But don't expect your Cardinals to go all the way, not quite yet. They need another bat, and they need better starting pitching. Guys, that's all for the video. Comment below whether or not you agree with my take on the Cardinals. Again, I'm becoming a Cardinals fan because of you guys, so please take the time to check out these videos. And um, as far as the question of the day, your franchise leader in, in St. Louis Cardinals history for slugging percentage is Mark McGuire with 683 slugging percentage. Guys, thanks for watching. Two-minute warning.